hope you had a good weekend. Hey, Mateo. And to answer your question, we're getting started on Arduino. So yeah, this is um, this is definitely going to be a little bit different from uh, from Inkscape or from HTML. Uh, so the stuff that we've done so far, we're going to get started with messing around a little bit with circuit design, with programming, sort of what a microcontroller is, and uh, what we can do with it. And this will tie into yep, one two three D circuits. Uh, this will tie into what you guys will be doing for lab as well, so that you guys can, you know make stuff and things and uh, objects and uh, yeah uh, anyway yeah so that's what we're going to spend probably the next few weeks on uh, this is probably going to be a pretty meaty portion of the semester uh, because there's a lot of material to cover here uh, getting more familiar with building circuits and uh, you know messing around with that sort of stuff um, so yeah I realize that in this sort of situation, it's going to be really hard for you guys to A, be able to see what I'm going to do, and B, you might not even, you know, have the hardware necessary for this. I, I couldn't be, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so for those reasons, uh, we are going to be using, like you figured, uh, 1, 2, 3D circuits. 1, 2, 3D circuits is pretty cool because not only does it simulate the hardware side, it will also simulate the software side. So we can create a circuit in 1, 2, 3D circuits uh, that's hooked up to an Arduino, and we can actually plug in Arduino code. A clown repelling device. Excellent. I like that idea. Um, we, can actually, we can actually plug in Arduino code, and it will simulate our circuit based on the code put in the Arduino. So, you know, we can have, uh, uh, for instance, we're going to start out with a blinking LED. We can have the LED blink with uh, a specific tempo on Arduino if we want to, uh, so that it'll work that way. But yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna mess around with that stuff. Uh, today is probably going to mostly be an intro to 1, 2, 3D circuits and Arduinos in general, um, although we might get started on the blinking LED. Who knows? Time will tell. We're all about, you know, keeping things in suspense, right? So, you know, there you go. Uh, that's, that's, that's how we're going to operate. We're going to keep things in, in suspense. And apparently I can't say suspense. Blah. Blah. Talking's hard. Anyway. For a set of presentations like this, certainly this first one, we might be going like, what's the point? What even is an Arduino? What can we do with it? How do we make it do stuff? Excellent set of questions, let me tell you, first of all. And second of all, let me, uh, let me at least sort of touch on those questions. So an Arduino is, well, the technical term for it is a microcontroller. It is a small piece of hardware that has a bunch of inputs and outputs on it, and a little tiny processor that you can put code onto. Little tiny processor, just a little itty bitty, tiny, 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 tiny bit, and a little bit of flash memory that you can load the code onto, so that it will, you know, the processor can then run it. Um, it's called a microcontroller. Hey, no worries, Anna. Uh, we're just, we're just doing introduction stuff for Arduino right now, so you haven't really missed much. <laughs> You're totally fine. Um, it's called a microcontroller because there are controllers. And I'm not talking about the one that hooks up to the Xbox or the PlayStation. I'm talking about ones that run factories. Like, big things that have a bunch of inputs and a bunch of outputs, and you program them and it's a mess because, you know, you have to take into account the fact that there are multiple, you know, maybe multiple processors and multiple registers. And the amount of time it might take to do one thing, you have to have, wait in another register a certain number of milliseconds in order to be sure that it feeds the information at the correct time to the, to the register that's doing all the calculations and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, Arduino is a little tiny version of that. And it's much more user-friendly than a full-size programmable logic controller. So rejoice! 
you could use it as a PLC. Uh, it's it's a very very small yeah PLC PLC. Um, I have I have friends who work in automation and they, they even though you could use it as a PLC, it's for home stuff. I mean they have horror stories of uh, somebody running a small scale factory on an Arduino, people running larger factories on multiple Arduinos, and that's not recommended. Absolutely not recommended. But for 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 home stuff, you could totally totally hook up an Arduino and use it as a as like a, a PLC for your own. I mean it is in essence it's a PLC. It's a programmable logic controller. That is the that is the that is what PLC stands for and that is what Arduino does. You can program it and you can use it to control stuff and you can use it for logistics. Um, so yeah, you, you yeah, totally could use it as a PLC. Just, you know, for small stuff that you don't really need to worry about timing and things like that very much. Um, it has a timer built into it, but it's not like these these monstrous, you know, PLCs that they have for factories and stuff like that. Anyway, this is what it looks like. These are multiple different um, models of Arduino. You've got like the red board, which is the SparkFun kit, uh, which is kind of like an Arduino Uno, I believe. Uh, you've got the Nano right next to it. You've got a, uh, uh, an actual Uno beneath the red board. Um, that's an Intel uh, microcontroller. Um, so, like, really, there's a whole lot of different uh, different models and stuff like that too. You can get larger or smaller microcontrollers, uh, given you know space concerns or. Okay, sounds good, Hannah. Um, given you know space concerns or or how much you need to control that kind of stuff. Mini Arduino Pro. That's what that says. Okay. Well, what can you do with them? Well, I mean, really. Kind of like your imagination is the limit. You know, I said that whole thing about maybe not running factories with it. So I guess that's the technical limit. But there's, 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 there's be aside from that, the, your imagination is the limit. Um, you can stick an Arduino in a quadcopter, or in this case, a hexcopter, and you know, control it with that. You can create a 3D printer and and hook up an Arduino to it. Um, you can use it for a for a CNC machine. Uh, there are, there are projects I've seen where people hook up a pump and a bunch of water and LEDs. And uh, here, let me just show you because this is pretty neat. So this is called Liquid Life Bar, and it's an Arduino project. And this is one of the things that you can do with Arduino. I, like I said, your imagination is really, you know, like the limit here. So this guy takes some some piping, takes some, uh, I'm going to mute this, takes some piping, takes a bag, takes a servo, squishes the bag, fills the bag up with water, so he either squishes the water or, you know, lets it flow back into the um, the bag. Takes a bunch of LEDs, a bunch of RGB LEDs, so that he can do whatever color he wants. Maybe it's a she. You know, I don't know. I don't actually. But it, it does kind of look like maybe a he. I don't know. Based on hands. Combines all of this stuff together. And uh, if any of you have played Terraria before, they use it as a physical health bar for their character in Terraria. But they can do stuff like this. So like they fill it up with water and then they set it to a color and then they can, they can change the level of the water on demand. They can change the color of the LEDs which shine through the water on demand. They can even do, they can tie the two together, like you're about to see in this example here, once it finishes loading the YouTube video. Come on now, come on. 
Okay, there we go. I think this is pretty cool, by the way. So, yeah, as you can see, here's the, the, the life bar over here. As he's getting attacked, the life bar is going down and it's changing to red slowly. So it's just something physical in his room. And he, you know, it takes like health packs and stuff like that. His health refills. And so the, the water fills back up again and it goes up to green. So that's something you can do. You can make it a mana bar. I mean, that's what they, they ended up using with it as well. So that's something you can do with Arduino, is you have the ability to do, I mean, a lot of things. And you might be like, this isn't very useful. And uh, that's, that's the thing. If you don't think it's very useful, you can make something else with it. You can, you can hook it up to a servo that locks your front door and then hook it up to your router. So you can send a command through your router to lock your front door from your phone, right? An app on your phone, and you can just press a button and your front door locks. You can press another button and your front door unlocks. You can hook it up to the power on your television. You can hook it up to the thermostat. You can um, make a, a small robot out of it that you know can clean the floors. You can make a small robot out of it that you can send to another room and pick something up and bring it back to you. You can, uh, oh Lord. There's all kinds of things you can do with an Arduino um, because it's a small programmable logic controller, a tiny programmable logic controller. So now we've talked about Arduinos, what you can do with them and what they are and kind of stuff. Um, let's spend a little bit of time introducing how you can control something like that. You, can you make a robot that steals pizza? It would be a lot of work. But, potentially, you would need to write some sort of, some sort of device, some sort of uh, program that will allow it to identify pizza visually or through some other means, and then you would need to include that device on it, you would need to have locomotion that would allow it to control it, and then, you know, maybe like a PID program that would allow it to turn towards pizza and follow it. Um, you would need to program a grasping mechanism that would take the pizza some sort of maybe storage mechanism to keep it warm so that you could bring the pizza back. It needed to be pretty fast so it could get away from people who were trying to run after it because it stole the pizza. You know, it would be a lot of work, but potentially, yeah. So now, let's talk about how we control an Arduino. Because that's the thing. Could it fly? Well, let me just go ahead and circle this right here. Yes. Yes, it could. But yeah, um, let's let's spend some time talking about controlling it because this looks like what do we what do we do with this? What are, there's just a bunch of there's a bunch of silicon and some plugs and some other plugs and there's a reset button. And I presume that you don't just press the reset button in Morse code in order to get it to do what you want it to do. You know, press the reset button f five times in a row and you turn it into pizza thief mode. But press it four times and uh, it'll lock your front door for you. You know, that doesn't seem very uh, feasible. Especially since the button's called reset. You can probably guess what the button does. It resets it. So that's the only physical button that's attached to this thing. How do we do stuff with it? I want to make it do things. Well, that's what these sets of lessons are all about. Let's take some time to talk about the SparkFun kits first, because you guys will probably be messing around with some of those, at least at some point, uh, probably during lab, if not at home. The SparkFun Inventors Kit, and it belongs there, um, contains a whole bunch of other stuff in addition to an Arduino. Uh, it contains a bunch of wires and yeah, gizmos and, and components and things like that uh, because the hardware side of an Arduino 
is just as important as the software side. The two work in tandem in order to do whatever you want them to do. I know it says actual size for the resistors. That's obviously highly sub subjective because this is just a picture that we resized. But, you know, by and large, it's going to be, the resistors are going to be fairly small as well. So, you, you anyway. Um, the hardware side is just as important as the software side. We're going to be building circuits in addition to programming in an Arduino in order to be able to get it to do what we want. We're not going to worry about that. We're actually going to mess around with 1, 2, 3D circuits in a moment, but I want to show you guys all the, the different kinds of stuff that's on the Arduino. So first of all, we got the power jack. Super exciting, I know, but without it, your Arduino is not going to run. It just won't. It doesn't have a built-in battery. So it'll the, the, the flash memory on it will keep its information, if you unplug it, up to a certain point, you know, I don't know how long that, that, that given period of time is, whether it keeps the information for three days or three years or whatever, I'm not entirely sure. However, um, the, the Arduino itself will not actually run without power. So that is a necessary thing. We got USB, so you can interface with uh, larger components, maybe a joystick, maybe a computer, maybe a uh, um uh oh geez um maybe a maybe a phone who knows power pins power pins where is that they're pins which you can plug power into so you've got, okay, <laughs> let me be a little bit more helpful here. Um, you've got 3.3 volts, you've got 5 volts, you've got grounds, you've got, you know, voltage in, you've got reset, IO reference, um, things like that. So like 3.3 and 6 volts or 5 volts are going to be sending power out. And that's important to note is the Arduino can send out 5 volts if need be. It can send out 3.3 volts as well. Um, but it can't do any more and it can't do any less. And it can't do anything between those values. Theoretically speaking, realistically speaking, it's going to kind of jump around those values um, just because averages are weird and stuff like that. And the way that an Arduino can supply power, it, you know, well, anyway, um, it won't always be hitting those marks 100%. Grounds are where you can send power into the Arduino um, in order to complete a circuit. Now that that's that's an important thing to note. It's in order to complete a circuit. This is a ground that you like. This is a ground for a circuit. It is not an Arduino will not take any information in on these. Um, so you know maybe if you're trying to figure out whether or not the Arduino can read power from a certain thing, it's not going to be able to do that uh, if you put it into the ground. Um, a ground is strictly to have a place for electricity to go, so that the circuit will complete. Reset, if it gets a value there, it will reset the Arduino. Uh, voltage in, be able to read voltage in on that one. Uh, I'll reference uh, for input and output. Next, we've got the analog pins. Now we've got analog pins and digital pins. Does anybody know what the difference between analog and digital is? Just off the top of your head, maybe, perhaps. Okay, that's fine. I'll tell you. So, you guys are probably pretty familiar with the term digital, right? I mean, you hear it all the time. This is your digital blah, 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 digital whatever, digital this, digital that, digital music, digital connections, digital world. Ugh. Um, the term digital is thrown a lot, around a lot. Well, digital and analog, two very different things. Analog, as far as I know, it's 
It's been around longer than digital. So let's consider a hypothetical situation here. We've got a thing that can send out power. Let's use Arduino numbers. So this could be the amount of power it sends out. And this could be time from 0 seconds to 10 seconds. Power from 0 to 5 volts, time from 0 to 10 seconds. A digital, maybe if it's sending out digital power, you can send out one of two values, either completely off or completely on. You can only send either 0 or 5 volts. So your graph might look something like this. It sends 0 volts for a second, then it sends 5 volts for a second, then it sends 0 volts for a second, then it sends 5 volts for a second. You get the idea. The reason why these are supposed to be vertical lines, vertical lines because it goes from 0 to 5 pretty much instantaneously, and back down to 0 pretty much instantaneously. Come on, give me a straight line. There we go. So for that reason, we represent it with vertical lines. Um, this might look a little bit familiar. Digital, either on or off. One or zero. That's the only value with digital. Think of like a lamp that you just flip a switch and it turns on. And you flip the switch again and it turns off. Now maybe you can see why everything that's related to computers is referred to as digital. Because computers are full of millions, millions, and millions of tiny little components called transistors. And these transistors will either read as, either read a, a value, like a, a current or no current. Like it's not going to be like, oh, I kind of read a current, but like, you know, it's not quite as much of a current. It's, it's basically if, if a value is, if the current is above a certain value, the transistor is considered on, in essence. If it's not, it's considered off. We translate that on computers to ones and zeros. Binary, either on or off. Computer programs are written in ones and zeros, on and offs. Sequences of uh, transistors being flipped on and off. In doing that, we the computer interprets it differently, sends different values to the monitor, and we have programs. But they're all on and off and stuff like that. It's all digital. It's all either on or off. Now consider that same graph, but analog. We can also send 0. We can also send 5. But here's the thing about analog. Is analog can send any of the values in between as well. Think of, instead of a lamp with a light switch that you can flip on or off, think of a lamp with a dimmer switch. You can turn down the dimmer and you can make the lights, well, dimmer. You can turn it back up and you can make the lights brighter. That is an example of an analog circuit. You can have full on, you can also have full off. You can also have any value in between. That's the tricky thing about, you know, a lot of stuff we deal with today is sometimes you receive and send values in analog, and sometimes you receive and send values in digital. Sometimes a component will require a digital signal. Sometimes a component will require an analog signal so on and so forth. Sometimes you'll have to mix the two. You'll receive a value in analog, and you'll have to send it out in digital, or vice versa. Think of like motors, like little electric motors. We send them an analog value, because if you send them more electricity, they'll turn faster. That's not always the case. Some motors are either on or off. Or explode, yeah. Um, <laughs> some motors are either on or off. And we can simulate making them run faster or slower by flipping them on and off super fast. 
I'm not joking. We can, we can also simulate an analog signal with digital by changing the ratio of how long it's, been, it's on to how long it's off. But that's another discussion for another day. Um, regardless, just understand that there is a that is the difference between the two. Digital is either on or off, no in between. Analog is on or off, or 50% or 75% or you know 30% or 10% or 1% or 99% or whatever. That is the difference between the two. Arduino supplies the capability to interact with both of those, to interface with both of those. So you've got analog pins, which will read an analog value, and you've got digital pins, which will read a digital value, thus giving you more functionality. Hey, analog versus digital. This is another way to put it, yeah. Analog has an infinite uh, number of possible values, whereas digital has a finite number of possible values. And you might be saying like, well, no, because it's not like analog can go up to like a million volts, whereas digital can't. And you'd be right, you know, from zero to five volts, digital certainly has a finite possible number of values. An analog has a finite range. It can only go from zero to five volts and back down. However, the infinite comes in and all those values in between. We could send 1.01 volts. We could send 1.011 volts. We could send 1.0111 volts. We can send 1.01111 volts. We could send 1.02, you get the idea. Analog, in that sense, has an infinite number of possible values because there are an infinite amount of numbers between zero and even one. There are an infinite number of numbers between them if you take into account decimal numbers. With digital, again, it's either on or it's off. There's no in between. So it has a finite number of possible values. Two, in fact, two of them. We can simulate an infinite number of possible values with that whole like flipping on and off really fast thing that I was talking about. But by and large, it's either on or it's off. Anyway, digital pins, yeah. We got a reset button. Reset will turn the Arduino off or basically stop executing its code and start back over from the beginning. Useful in case you run into a situation where like, I don't know, you're stuck in an infinite loop or something like that. And uh, you need to at least reset it so that it'll start over from the beginning after you fix the code. TX LED transmitting. The TX means that the Arduino is sending information out on its USB. This is useful for, you know, like talking to a computer or something like that. RX LED receiving. Arduino is receiving information through the USB if that LED is blinking. Basically, whenever that LED is lit up, the Arduino is either depending upon which LED is lit up. If the, the TX LED is lit up, the Arduino is transmitting information as that LED is lit. When the LED is not lit, the Arduino is not transmitting information. So when it's blinking, it's transmitting bits of data really fast. Same with the RX, same basic concept. If it's lit, the Arduino is receiving information. If it's not, it's not. If it's blinking, it's receiving packets of data really, really quickly. Pin 13 is just simply lit up whenever there's electricity being sent out through pin 13. That's really all that means, and that's a good debug pin um, for that reason. So like on our blinking LED, we could set it up so that power is being sent out through pin 13. And if we were really, you know, strapped for like um, components or something like that, we wouldn't even have to hook up an LED to the system because pin 13 would light up anytime electricity was being sent out of it. So we could verify in that case that it was working properly. 
Power on LED. Pretty self-explanatory. If it's on, the Arduino's on. Not much else to say about that. And I'm not going to quiz you guys on that. Fitness. Okay, so let's take a moment to look at 1, 2, 3D circuits. Let me pull up the website again. Just to make sure I have it. Woo! There we go. In the chat box, there should be a link to 1, 2, 3D circuits. Go ahead and click that link and you will be taken to the same page that I'm on. Now, 1, 2, 3D circuits, like I said, is a simulator. It's a circuit simulator. Now, it also includes Arduino. So, we would be able to hook up an Arduino in our simulated circuit, a simulated Arduino, give it some code, and simulate how it would operate. Simulate. Simulation. Let me just say it a couple more times. Simulate. Anyway, uh, once you're here, uh, if you already have a login, go ahead and sign in. If not, click join us. Sign up for a free account because $9.99 a month. Right now you don't need to pay that. $1,579, you definitely don't need to pay that. However, a starter pack does include a MakerBot and PLA and maybe a warranty. Anyway, yeah, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be messing around with that stuff. We're gonna be using the free 123D account. Go ahead and create an account, put in your first name, your last name, email address, and password. You'll get a confirmation email. In which case you can, um, you know, confirm your account with that. And then once you've done that, go ahead and get signed in. So I'm going to go back to 123D Circuits and log in. And then you guys just raise your hand once you've either signed in, well, once you've signed in. Wow, okay, so that's uh, that's almost everybody. And that's everybody. Probably. Okay. So, now that I'm signed in, I'm going to go ahead and launch 1, 2, 3D circuits online. Bam. Oh, now it's circuits.io. Interesting. That they have changed. Okay, so I guess I'll go ahead and get signed in again. They must have moved it. Huh. Okay. Right. Well, anyway, um, we're in one or er, in Autodesk circuits. So cool. This is where we wanted to be. This guy's been busy, apparently. Okay. That's neither here nor there. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Create up here at the top. We've got Electronics Lab, PCB Design and Manufacturing, and Circuit Scribe. We're interested in the Electronics Lab. Simulate and program Arduino and breadboard components. Test your Arduino code in a real-time simulation environment and see your designs come to life in the browser. That sounds like right up our alley right now, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Electronics Lab Hub. And I'm going to delete all my unnamed circuits. Because... I have like a bazillion of them from doing all of these uh, from these uh, uh, classes. 
Okay, I guess I'll have to go back to the Electronics Lab Hub. And once we're here, we'll click on New Electronics Lab. And we'll get a loading screen. Amazing. But if we give it a second, we've got this lovely looking breadboard here. Lovely, lovely. Um, we got some buttons up here that we'll take a look at in a minute. And uh, it's just generally sort of very open looking. Now the breadboard is breadboard is a is a basically a some metal wrapped around in a piece of plastic that allows you to uh, rapidly prototype circuits. And I mean rapidly compared to like making a circuit, you just basically plug stuff in. Hook it up. Have it do the thing that you want it to do. If you wanted to finalize a circuit, you would be, you know, probably etching some PCB out and soldering in connections and making sure that everything's built to last and blah, 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 blah. Breadboard, you know, you just plug or unplug based on what you want. You know, you, you, it's not it's not ideal for creating a permanent circuit with, but it is very good for figuring out a circuit to be used later on. But how does a breadboard work, you might ask? You might not be asking that. You might already be very familiar with breadboards, in which case, I apologize, because I'm about to explain about how breadboards work. Breadboards are, um, well, like I said, they're just a bunch of strips of metal encased in plastic. And the way those strips of metal are oriented is really what makes a breadboard uh, very useful. So consider a cutaway of a breadboard, which there is um, a picture of here, maybe. Is it up here? Is it down here? Um, I know there's a picture of the breadboard cut away. All right, well, I guess I'm losing my mind. Okay, never mind. Let me see if I can't find a picture. None of these are useful. That one is useful. Sort of. Okay, so, hey, no worries, Brennan, it happens. Um, so this is a cutaway of a breadboard right now. I'm going to zoom way the heck in and blow this thing up so it's super ugly looking. But at the very least, you might be able to, maybe, possibly, maybe look over here and see that there are, like, these sort of fingers of metal in the plastic here. You might have also noticed, if you look closely, that these move. Uh, these these fingers of metal extend up to the squares, which are in the top of the breadboard. Please excuse my subpar drawing skills. And then on top of that. The really perceptive people, or the people who already understand how breadboards work, may understand that this set of fingers is connected by a metal rail at the bottom. You might be able to see it more easily over here. So like that. But who cares? You might be asking. Well, I care. 
Not if you mutilate it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, let me go ahead and erase those then. Oops. There we go. Sorry. Um, and you should care too, because here's the thing. These are all connected on the same rail. Uh, what? Let me try that again. These are all connected on the same rail. And these are all connected on the same rail. And these are all connected on the same rail. And these are, but here's the critical thing. They're not connected to each other. This rail right here is not connected to this rail. And this one is not connected to this one. And this one is not connected to this one and so on. They're only connected, yeah, on the same row. Exactly. So they're all connected this way. They're not even connected across the middle here. There's there's no connections across the middle here. Now here's the here's the thing about that. We can plug something into right here and have it be connected to something right here. We can jump connections, have something connected to these two, and suddenly we have this one connected to this one over here by virtue of a jumper, and so we can bring something in over here, so on and so forth. So it allows us to rapidly connect a whole bunch of stuff together. Now here's the other thing. If I mouse over this, you can see how we've got like green circles here and a green line. These are telling us which ones are connected to one another. You might also notice that these up here are all connected on a perpendicular rail, and it's a much longer rail. That's the other nice thing about breadboards, is you might notice the plus and minus here. We can easily create a power and a ground rail in order to power our circuit. So we have these horizontal rails in order to connect different parts of the circuit, and we have our power and ground rails in order to provide power to our entire circuit. So a breadboard is very good for rapidly prototyping things, because we can just plug stuff in and unplug it wherever and whatever. And that's what we're going to be using this for. Now, insofar as controlling stuff is concerned on this, we can click and drag in order to move stuff around. I can hit the R key in order to rotate it. I believe, yes, holding down the shift key and hitting R rotates it in the other direction. And um, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So let's move the breadboard over here to the side. And we'll just keep that there for now. We want to add some more components to this. I'm kind of interested in uh, maybe setting up our build and blink here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to components and I'm going to click on it. And let me take stock of all the stuff we're going to need for build and blink. We are going to need one LED, one 330 ohm resistor, and three wires. So let me go ahead and grab a resistor and an LED. Now you might be going like, hey, who knows what kind of resistor that is? And you didn't grab any jumper cables. You're right. Well, first of all, I'm also going to grab an Arduino. Let's grab an Arduino Uno. And let's actually make my life a lot easier by doing a search for it. Over here in the search bar, as you can see in the components list, we have a search bar. So I'm going to type in Arduino, Arduino Uno R3 and just drag it out of here. Notice how it took a second because it's a lot of stuff to simulate. So I'm going to click the components box and make it go away. So now we've got an Arduino, an LED, and a resistor. Let's go ahead and make some magic happen. I'm going to rotate the Arduino so that the digital pins are set up over here. I'm going to plug the LED in onto one of these. And I'm going to bring the uh, resistor over here. Now again, we don't know the, uh, the ohms on this resistor. I say that, but we actually do know it. There's a way to read it. And we can also click on it, and it will show up over here on the upper right-hand side. So as we can see, I clicked on it, so it's got the blue outline. 
our resistor name is 1, because we're good at names, and our resistance is 1 kilo ohm. But we don't want 1 kilo ohm, we want 330 ohms. So let's go ahead, we'll type in, what is your deal? We'll type in 330, and as you can see, the bands changed color. We're going to change kilo ohms down to regular ohms, and then the band finally changed color one more time. That is how you read a resistor in real life, is by looking at the colors on here. The first color is going to be the first significant digit, second color is going to be the second significant digit, and uh, the, the third color is going to be what power of 10 those first two digits are. So in this case, orange is equal to 3, so 3 and 3, we've got our two significant digits. And then brown is going to be equal to, I believe, 2? That should be 1. I guess 2. Anyway, uh, so 3.3 uh, 3 times 10 to the second power, so 3.3 3 times 100 gives us 330 ohms. And we can, we can go into that lesson in greater detail, or we can go into that in greater detail on another lesson. I just want to get this going. We've, I've gone way over time on this. Um, so I at least want to show 1, 2, 3D circuits, even if we don't get an Arduino blinking an LED today. Some of you might be disappointed that I that. In which case, I do apologize. But some of you may not care. <laughs> I want to make sure I also don't go too fast. So I've got an LED hooked up. Now notice there's something wrong with this LED that I've got hooked up if I have it hooked up like this. What do you think the problem is with that? No power in wrong direction. Okay, yeah, definitely no power. You are you have a very good point there. But also remember what I was saying about how um, how these are all connected on the same row. So if we were to send electricity in through here, for instance, electricity is lazy. We anticipate electricity will come out through here. You know, like go up into the LED and come back down and go out. Um, We anticipate that. However, electricity is lazy. What's going to happen is power is going to come in here. It's going to go up into the LED. It's going to come right back down, go back up, come back, and just go around and 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 around forever. And guess what's going to happen to the LED? I'll illustrate it. If you guessed that was an explosion, you guess properly. With enough power, you would pop an LED, and that would be uh, that would be a thing. That would be a bad thing. So what we want to make sure is we want to make sure we don't run into short circuits. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the LED so it's on a different circuit. So now, again, according to our breadboard, we've got electricity running. Um, and we're pretty sure, at least right now, that we're not going to have a short circuit. Let me bring the Arduino over here. So how do we connect these two? Well, it's simple enough. We just click. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to click again. And we've created a jumper cable simply by clicking. We can change the color of these wires by clicking on them and referencing that same, that exact same, um, uh, properties menu that we saw for the uh, for the uh, uh, resistor. So I'm going to change these to black and red respectively. Red for electricity and black for ground. Red for power, black for ground. It's a pretty common thing to do. And then uh, we can hook up our resistor and our LED to the circuit. So now if I were to run this, let's just go ahead and start the simulation. Nothing's happening, but that might just be because we have everything hooked up in the wrong direction. 
let's go ahead and try this then. We start the simulation again. You can see it, it's kind of faint, but the LED is lit up. So we even built something simpler than the blinking light. We simply hooked power up to five volts, put it onto the power rail, then it's running from the power rail, it's jumping on a jumper cable here over to our resistor. It's traveling through the resistor uh, on this rail to the anode on the LED, traveling through the LED back out on the same rail over to ground, and then it's traveling from ground to the ground in our Arduino. Um, it's A54. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw out the poll question, or I'm going to ask you guys the poll questions. And then um, we're going to leave it open for question and answer time, at least until three after, because I know I came in a little bit later today. Uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to head out. You know the drill. Uh, otherwise, we'll go ahead and break, and we'll meet again on Wednesday. We'll get started on our blinking LED, which involves also programming with the Arduino and getting that stuff done. And uh, maybe we'll move on to, maybe we'll get a couple projects done on Wednesday. I'm hoping so, because the blinking LED is super fast. Although we will spend, I, I will spend a fair amount of time explaining the, the the code behind it as well. So maybe we'll just get blinking LED done. I don't know. We'll see. At any rate, uh, let me go ahead and ask the first poll question and the second poll question, and then uh, we'll leave it open for question and answer.